You don't think I was going to leave this alone, did you? No. I'm going to try and perform a backlight mod on the shortwave radio shack, realistic, whatever you want to call it, DX390 shortwave receiver. Um, the lamp that comes in this is a tube lamp. It's just a regular uh, incandescent bulb. So we're going to take that out because it was very dim and very hard to read at night anyway, even with it on. And so that is not of use to me because I have very poor vision, believe it or not. So what you got to do is take it all apart. I've already shown you in the previous video of how to disassemble this unit. The only difference is you'll have to disassemble this board, unplug the connectors off of the board that we've modified. And here is where I would, um, this is the connector here that you'd uh, clip the, the green wire uh, if you wanted to uh, lose the, the memory, uh, not the memory, I'm sorry, the mute pod, but I uh, showed you how to do it the right way and unsolder the actual uh, diode in the circuit instead. And now that doesn't always work on all applications, it just so happened to be that that can, uh, component didn't go to anything else other than this green wire. So, without further ado, let's see what we can do to this screen to get a better backlighting. Uh, first thing I noticed is that this metal tab here was bent down, I bent it up, and there was a bulb sitting on a bushing or a padding material and it's soldered on the top side of the board on this side and this side and the voltage is 6 volts uh, I, I made up an AC adapter a 6 volt adapter a 6 volt adapter with the connector here and I took the bulb out well I measured it with the bulb in it was about 5.8 volts so give or take about 6 volts maybe a couple of millivolts lost in the logic of the light um, I don't, I'm not 100% married to a plan yet of how I'm going to do this because I don't like the feature that when you turn it on in about 15 seconds the light goes out and I kind of want to have this so when it's plugged into the wall the backlight is on all the time. So that might get kind of tricky or I just might marry it to the backlight being on all the time anyway. I don't know and not run it off batteries. I haven't decided how I'm going to do this yet but we're going to toy around with ideas of choosing a lamp. Uh, I've got a blue LED, and I have a white LED around here somewhere. I don't know where it disappeared. Things that like to disappear on my bench. But I will find it, and I will show you what each one looks like. Okay, I've dimmed the shop lighting to get a better effect of how this would look. Um, it's fairly accurate with the camera. So I'm going to try the blue LED. Now, I've actually just simply just put that LED on top of the bushing, and it and it, um, it actually holds it against this flap that I've bent up. And I've just got a couple of lead, leads going to my power supply that I have set for um, roughly around 3.5 volts or so. Uh, so I'm going to try and figure out the resistor that I'm going to need and all that and how much current it's going to draw, but that's a little later on. I just want to get color saturation uh, against the LCD uh, and see how it looks. So I'm going to plug in the lead to the power supply and just power the LED. That's not too bad. It's a little overpowering. Uh, actually, it does show a little bit more overpowering in the uh, LCD and the screen here on the camera than it does in real life. So there's one thing, characteristics of LEDs that I do not like, and that's its directional light path. You can actually see a flare of the LED itself, the light path the lights matter. Let me turn my radio down again. And I've come up with over the years a way to correct this. Um, and I will show you how to do this. It is very simple, very easy, and you will thank me in your future projects. So we're going to try the white one and see how that looks too. Okay, so with the magic of film editing, this seemed instantaneous, so I'm going to plug in the white LED now, and we'll see what it looks like. And from what you can tell, it's doing the same light spatter uh, across the screen, and it's not very consistent. I do like the white, it's a little bit more appealing to my eye versus the blue. The blue seems a little bit more 
Um, it's nice, but uh, I'm going to have to play around with the blue and the white deciding what I want to do. Now to show you the trick to diffusing this issue. Basically what I do, I'm going to turn on the light here, is I'll take an LED, and you're probably wondering what the scotch bright has been doing on my bench. Now I'll take the LED and rub it across the scotch bright all the way around the, the top side of the LED until you get it to a point where it's, I don't know if you can tell here in this, but it gets nice and diffused. Come on, focus. I don't know what it is about this camera, but it does not like to focus. Anyways, I think you get the idea. So what I like to do is I like to do the top and just roll it on the side and do it this way and rotate it all the way around. And maybe you can see a little bit better here. I'm not actually doing it. I'm demonstrating. I've already done this LED. But I would you know, run it across the scotch braid like this. Run it across on the top. And I will show you how it looks. Alright, so we have the diffused LED in there now. And what you're going to tell is a little, a little bit more consistent across the screen of the light pattern. The only thing you're going to notice is that there is, uh, you're still going to have the little bit of bleed on the corner here from the, the actual output of the LED. And there's nothing you can really do about that unless you come up with some other type of light diffusers, which I may or may not do. But this is strictly for demonstration. It does have a little bit more consistent light across the screen. You don't have those triangle effect. Uh, as bad of the light spatter out of the LED. Uh, to be honest with you, in person it looks a little bit more consistent than it does on the LCD. Uh, I think the camera is picking up a little bit of uh, discrepancy of what I'm actually seeing. Uh, so I'm going to run with this idea and see how it looks after I get things together and powered on and see how it actually looks against the, um, the actual text on the screen. All right, so now I have the board powered up under its AC power supply that I have made. Um, obviously, it took a combination of uh, the right connector, um, the right ring connector. I can't remember the specific name connector uh, that you need to plug in. Uh, center negative, six volts outside uh, ring positive, and I had to find a six volt uh, transformer, six volt DC. I found an old uh, phone transformer, which is probably a better bet because it's probably a little bit more filtered than your traditional AC wall adapters. Um, your traditional AC wall adapters will actually fluctuate about 10% in voltage on the higher end when you go to measure them. This was pretty regulated out at 6 volts, so I'm happy to see that because uh, this is a short rate receiver and any noise counts. Alright, so let's try, <clears throat> let's try and see what this looks like now. Oh, that's much better. I can see that. Um, and it doesn't even really bother me all that much that there's just a little bit of a um, little bit of extra light glare here. Uh, like I said, I may try and tone that down a bit, but uh, it really doesn't look that bad now. Uh, I can definitely read it. I'm about three feet away from this, and I can read it now. And in the dark before, even with that dark, dark orange glowy light that came with the unit was almost impossible to read unless you were right on top of it. So I think I'm going to fly with this for uh, now and see where I come up. And uh, I don't know, I'll we'll update. It will most likely be instantaneous for you guys, but uh, all right, let's see what happens. All right, for those of you that are curious about what a blue diffused, uh, diffused blue would look like, I've also tried that to um, compare and see what I liked better. Um, now that I have the blue in here, I'm kind of headed, leaning towards the blue LED because it's a little less aggressive, uh, especially if this is going to be at night and it's going to be near my bed stand or something. It may be a little less invasive than the white light. So uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to put a dimmer circuit in this or not, or just fix it at a uh, certain brightness. but. Um, you know, it's endless what you can do. So, uh, let's see what the blue looks like. That's quite sharp. That's nice. A little less uh, visible to the naked eye against the uh, compared to the white, but the video camera actually makes it look a little pop, a little bit, a little more brighter. 
but I, I do kind of like it. It's a little bit more uh, softer tone. Uh, it probably won't, you know, glow the room as as, a, uh, as bright as the white would. So I might stick with this blue. Uh, oh, it's a tough decision. It really is because the white looks nice and crisp, but the blue looks just sweet. So I'm gonna play back and forth between uh, white and blue and I'll make a final decision. And then I'm probably just gonna throw some hot glue uh, and hot glue this LED in place and uh, see what happens. If I'd had a tri-color LED or a two-color LED, I would I would play with that option too. But fortunately, I don't have that in stock right now. So this is what we got, and this is what we're gonna do. So so for now. I just do, uh, I, I got the LED wired up, and I got a 270 ohm resistor wired up in series with the LED. That should drop it down to where it's required to, uh, my, my brightness that I've chosen. And you can actually, if you want to do it the easy way, you can just go online and look up an LED calculator, put in the forward voltage, um, the supply voltage you're going to use, and the current drawer of the LED, and we'll spit out a number for you. Uh, for a resistor to use. Um, I used a 270 ohm resistor because uh, it was right about the bright brightness that I uh, that I liked. Um, like I said, I may put a dimmer in this eventually, but this is just the total test and hard wire. Um, no switches yet to turn on and off the LED or anything like that. The, the front light button has been disabled. Um, this is just basically going to sit on my nightstand, and I want this thing to be, gonna be lit all the time. It's going to be plugged in. It's not going to be run on batteries. So um, until I can come up with another idea or make another change, uh, that's the way we're going to run it right now. So what I have the uh, right now is the 6 volt to the LED through the resistor. The negative is going through uh, to this connector here on that um, uh, power supply connector that my my wall adapter is going to plug into and the negative is on the end, the left, and the positive is on the right. Now this positive here is broken from the battery connection. This goes to your battery connection when you plug it in. So um, when you plug this in, it essentially breaks away your battery so you're not charging your battery. But when you unplug it, this connection becomes this connection. So in theory, if I put my batteries in here, that light's going to be on all the time. So I'm not going to be putting batteries on here right now. And I'm just gonna run it the way it is until I um, until I think of something, or if I, you know, want to move further with the mod. But for the situation that I'm going to be using it in, uh, it's always going to be plugged in, and it's always going to be on. And that's that's as far as I'm going to go for now. And uh, so that's it. So I'm going to put this back together, and we'll see how it uh, all looks. Alright, so I've changed my mind since the last shot, which was probably about five minutes ago. I went down to my parts bin and I've located a little mini switch. So, I just could not put this back together with the knowing the capability that you could not run the batteries without the backlight being on. And that was just driving me nuts, it was eating at me, so I had to do something. So, what I think I'm going to do is put a switch right here down below all the connector inputs and outputs and that's going to shut the light on or off regardless. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my set of dial calipers here and I'm going to measure the middle of these connectors and I'm going to take that measurement and down here I'm going to drill a hole uh, for my switch so they'll all be straight in the line and I will hook up my wires to that and to the LED and hopefully that will give me the option to be able to shut the LED off if it's even too bright at night so uh, yeah I just could not do it I don't know just, just there's just something eating at me just says uh, put a switch and put a switch and put a switch and don't don't uh, you know I, I don't I don't know so we're gonna put a switch in <laughs> all right so we'll see what happens in the next shot here all right so here's the back of the radio again now I decided to put a switch in from my last video, and what we did, got here is we've got a switch now uh, in this area of the radio because uh, you can't put it down on this side. You can't put it at the bottom of the radio because this is where the, the D battery cell compartment is. Um, 
I didn't want to deal with that, so I put it up closer to near where the handle insert is. And if you keep it inside this post here, between this post and the post right here for this screw, uh, you should be relatively safe. Uh, your handle insert goes in here. And basically, I've got my switch breaking the positive side of the LED to the power supply. So if anybody wants to know how it was wired, here it is. That's the connector right here. Your, your AC wall, DC wall adapter will plug into the wall. Well, it's an AC wall adapter, but DC output six volts into this connector here. And what you got here is this is your battery positive coming into this lead here, which is that one. And your positive for your uh, wall adapter is right here. And what happens is when you plug this in, it breaks away the battery connection, and this becomes your supply positive. And uh, your negative goes to your battery on both, uh, both sides, and that comes to this connector here. Now all I've added in here is a wire that goes to the negative of the LED. And on the positive of the LED, I put a 270 ohm resistor and a, a single pole switch. And back to the positive where the power supply is. So now when you click it on and off, now you will have your light on or off at any given time. So I'm going to put this back together. I'm going to see how it all looks and performs. All right, so I've got everything back together now, and I have a temporarily uh, antenna hooked up to my uh, outdoor antenna. I just have it stuck in the center of my SO239 going out to my G5 RV. So we're just going to give it a test to see how well uh, and make sure everything still works. You know, the front end and everything didn't get damaged during the process. So we're going to turn it back on. Since we did the mod, we got the nice non-muted VFO. Now we're going to dim the uh, shop lights. And we're going to try the mod, the light mod that we did. Put a switch on the side. Oh, that, uh, there we go. That looks pretty good. I decided to go with the white because uh, I have poor vision to begin with, but uh, definitely looks nice. So it doesn't, didn't come out too bad. It's nice, it's dull, it's not super bright, it shouldn't be uh, too evasive in the, in the night time. That's what I wanted, and I have, like I said, I've put the the toggle switch on the top left, so that's it. And we're going to try it with the, the power source. That was on battery, by the way. And now that we got that in here, we're going to try it on there. Everything seems to work. Two the lights. Excellent. And this is a nice little radio because it's got a nice little stand that stands it off the the desk a little bit so it gives it a little bit of illusion that it's like a scanner so I really do like this radio and yeah, now that I have the feature of I can leave the backlight on and plugged in now that I've made my own uh, DC uh, AC wall adapter for it um, I think I'm gonna enjoy this a lot more and not having to rely on the battery the only thing I do have to do is come up with a long wire antenna for the outdoors and I think this will be a nice little um, uh, shortwave scanner uh, receiver so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the light mod and the mute mod. Um, there may be more to come, but uh, until I can think of anything else I want to do to this, this might be it. But, uh, alright, enjoy.